Oh, but I got Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14, and you eating that because what? Why? That's what we're trying to get y'all to see. Why are you eating Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14? There's a, there's a strong blood lust there. That's what it is. Oh, there ain't no other reason around it. There ain't hey, no other reason around it. Hey, peep this too, huh? Mm -hmm. Is Go that ahead. we say that we are the temple of the Most High, right? Come on home, brother. That's what we say, right? Mm -hmm. And we say we're not under the order urn. So the order urn had put blood and animals on the temple in this, as a sacrifice, right? But we claim we follow Hamashiach and we're under the order of Mikhail's death, right? Right. So why are we bringing meat and blood into our temples on the altar? Under a priesthood that right. don't exist anymore. That's right. That's right. Hey, look, brother, that's an excellent point there. Say that again. I don't think they caught what you said, Nee. That was powerful. So look, under the order of Mikhail's deck, right, which was the priesthood in the time of Adam, right, there was no blood being brought on the altar, right? We had no temples, but going fast forward to the future, and we look in the New Testament and we understand spiritually, we are the temples of the Most High. It says, which temple are ye, right? And so there are no longer priests bringing in flesh and blood into the temple or into your body and sacrificing it, killing it and eating it and putting it on the altar for any for any atonements or anything. So if we're not doing that to a physical temple. Why are we bringing meats and blood into our spiritual temples? Uh, yeah, you know what? Absolutely. That look, bro, that make all the sense in the world. All right, so your body is the temple, right? And and you we saying Messiah represents sacrifice, right? All right, well, you so know what I mean? All right, so if, if ain't no animals being slaughtered at the doorway of the physical temple, what are animals? What is what what is dead flesh doing in your temple? Because they had to be slaughtered. It had to be killed and slaughtered for you to receive it. And true about this, y'all. A lot of people are like, man, so you saying eating flesh is a sin, eating a sin. Look, sin is not just breaking or transgressing the law that you have written down. Sin is also when you arrive at a certain knowledge of righteousness. You arrive at a certain knowledge to do good and you go against doing good. James 4 and 17, to you, that is sin. You know what I mean? Because you can't manipulate that. Once you have the knowledge of doing what's right and you don't do it, that's sin. Outside of what you have written down, for instance, you won't find nowhere in the Bible written drinking bleach is sin. But I, I bet we all know in this chat. If I drink bleach, it'll kill me. It's dangerous for me. All right. So can I come on out? I have the knowledge to know that if I drink that, I'm going to die. Can a Negro manipulate you and tell you technically drinking bleach ain't no sin? I'll take a shot. It ain't no sin. It ain't written down no word. Well, there's no law. There's no sin. Well, what about receiving the knowledge of doing right and going against that? Is that or is that not sin? And if that is, then guess what we can say? Yeah, drinking bleach is a sin. Because you know that it is bad or wrong or harmful for you. It's that simple. And now if we can apply that to the bleach, guess what else we can apply that to? The flesh, the strong drink, and the smoke. The very thing that we've been telling y'all, stop putting it in your mouth. It's killing you. 